I've been at Holland and Knight for about four years. And one of the first things I did when I joined the firm was really um, seek out diverse lawyers. And I was super impressed um, and really attracted to the firm because of the high number of Latino and Hispanic lawyers that we have throughout the platform, but especially in Florida. So not something I was accustomed to, to have so many people who look like me, who spoke Spanish, um, who understood my culture and my background. Um, and so that was really has made my time at Holland and Knight special. I'm Puerto Rican by birth. Um, I spent some time in Puerto Rico, but I'm what we call a New Yorican. Uh, <laughs> grew up in the Northeast between New Jersey and, and New York. So I'm all Hispanic all of the time. <laughs> um, I So much of my professional identity and my cultural identity are intertwined. Um, uh, I'm not sure that that's always been true, um, uh, but we're, we're in a, an environment where uh, law firms have understood and embraced the power of diversity. And so it makes it much easier for people like me um, to be very proud of who they are and quite frankly, to figure out ways that we can benefit the firm and our own practices by leveraging what makes us different. And so I did that at the local level with Hispanic Bar of New Jersey as a young lawyer and ultimately became the president of the Hispanic Bar Association of New Jersey and then started to get involved with the Hispanic National Bar Association as either a young lawyer volunteer or sitting on committees or speaking in CLEs. And that has become, you will hear many HMBA members talk about this and um, it, they're not patronizing, it's familia, 100%. I've grown up with the organization and uh, I just recently was elected to be president-elect. And so that means that I will be the 46th president, I believe, of the Hispanic National Bar Association to be sworn in in September of 2023. And that for me is super exciting because it's the marriage and the culmination of my professional life, of my, my personal friends, of my huge interest in promoting diverse lawyers, Hispanic and otherwise. So I'm excited about it. It's gonna be a lot of work, but it's gonna give me a great platform to talk about what it is to be a diverse lawyer at a large firm. It's not just me. There's a whole group of volunteers, lawyer volunteers and um, amazing national staff um, whose focus it is to try to improve the trajectory um, for Latino lawyers and the Latino community when appropriate. And we do that in a number of different ways. The, the ways that sort of resonate with me the most are the student outreach, raising money through corporate sponsors and law firm sponsors like Holland and Knight to build scholarship funds to make sure that we help defray some of the costs, expensive um, cost of law school for some of these students. Uh, lots of mentoring programs to help law students not only navigate law school, but the whole job process. Um, identifying practice areas where lawyers have been historic, Latino lawyers have been historically underrepresented. In addition to all the good work that HMBA does, it is the best party I've ever been to. 
um, time and time again because the speeches happen and the regular catering dinner happens. But as soon as that's done, the lights go down, the music comes on, and we as a family get on that dance floor and have a really good time. That's a little bit of my Puerto Rican heritage um, that shows, uh, I hope I don't embarrass my good Puerto Rican dancers out there, but um, that shows and comes out um, and then I'm very proud of when, when we get together at the HMB. I probably was not as open about a lot of things, including my sexual orientation and being Latino, because it was just easier to put your head down and do the work and have what, what we often say is, oh, I just want to be judged on the quality of my work. I don't need to highlight the fact that I'm Latino and I don't need to highlight the fact that I'm gay. I just want people to judge me on, on my work. And that is true, but when you leave that on the table, right? When you um, avoid the conversation, I think it's, it's not authentic. And I think people feel that. And there's real benefit to being authentic in the office and outside of the office. And as soon as you become authentic, and as soon as I felt like I could be authentic, people started gravitating to me, right? You know, because now they're like, oh, wow, this guy doesn't have an agenda. He has nothing to hide. And so you have a much more human conversation with people when you're just your authentic self. Again, I'm not proud to say that I struggled with disclosing my identity and sexual orientation. Um, I think people need to do that in their own time and in their own way. But I can stand here as an example to say, to be courageous, to be authentic, and you will hopefully see many more doors open for yourself than are closed.